Known for his magical ears, Disney's Dumbo is loved by millions, but few know that it was the magical talents of three Syracuse residents that brought him to life. The year was 1938. Helen Aberson and her then-husband, Harold Pearl, dreamed up the story of a flying elephant. Aberson was a native Syracusan, born in 1907. Her address was listed as 1307 East Genesee Street. I'm standing at once, what was once 1307 East Genesee Street, the former home of Helen Aberson and Harold Pearl, author of what was Disney's Dumbo. As you can see, the home isn't here anymore. Helen was a local artist who graduated from the Syracuse University School of Speech. Upon completing her education, Aberson worked as the host of a talk radio program. Her husband Pearl moved here from New York City to manage the Echo Theater on East Fayette Street. Aberson and Pearl shared a passion for storytelling and after their marriage in 1938, they quickly collaborated on a children's story, not knowing just how high their elephant would ultimately soar. Another local artist, Helen Durney, was commissioned to illustrate the story. Helen Durney was also a native Syracusan, born and raised in the city of Syracuse. She graduated from the Syracuse University College of Fine Arts with a degree in painting. Durney worked at what was then the Syracuse Museum of Fine Arts. The museum started as an exhibit of small collections which occupied several different buildings during its infancy. Durney started working there in 1935, when it was located at 407 James Street. Today, the organization operates as the Everson Museum, located in downtown Syracuse. Durney lived at 175 Parkside Avenue in the Strathmore neighborhood, where Dumbo was brought to life. In 1938, the story and illustrations were sold to a hometown company called Rollabook. In 1939, Everett Whitmire, a Syracuse advertising agent and Rollabook publisher, sold the story and illustrations of Dumbo to Walt Disney's productions for $1,000. Disney flew Abertson out to California where she worked as a consultant on the film which was released in 1941. At the time, Disney was a small struggling company and many believed that the story of Dumbo saved the company from financial ruin. After the movie's premiere, Abertson and Pearl soon divorced and moved away. In 1941, Abertson received a $400 royalty check from Disney. They called it a final settlement. Abertson would remarry and continue writing children's stories, but none were ever published. Helen Durney spent her entire life contributing to the art scene here in Syracuse, New York. She is laid to rest here in Oakwood Cemetery. She passed in 1970. Known now as a children's classic, Dumbo's connection to Syracuse was forgotten by many until Aberson's death in New York City in 1999. It was then that local historian Dick Case was able to help discover a box of Durney's papers in the home of her cousin in Chittenango. The box contained a treasure trove of Durney's work including the original illustrations of the flying elephant. The box was donated to Syracuse University where it resides today in their Department of Special Collections at Bird Library. Inside the box was a copy of a letter sent to Walt Disney from Durney in 1939, which reads, The world is so much richer because you live, Walt Disney. Don't let anything happen to your creative genius. Don't ever grow up. Good luck to you and success to Dumbo.